downtown Kansas City. Uh, we're going to do a low light test with the Black Magic 6K, uh, as well as the dual ISO, native ISO, and then we're going to load it up in Premiere and see what it can do. I'm pretty impressed with it. We're using the Zine 24 uh, T1.5. This thing is a beast. Um, it's going to look nice, um, so I'm not sure exactly how the footage is going to turn out, but it should be pretty good. Hey everyone, welcome back. Thanks for watching. I wanna just give a special thanks to Matt and Gabe for helping me out with this video. As well, I wanna give a special thanks to Nathan, fellow YouTuber Nathan G. Sean, uh, for helping me figure out the external monitor control display. Um, so thanks for putting that in the comments. Again, please, if any of you know something I don't, I'd love to get your input. You know, we're all in this thing together shooting. Um, we're all videographers and if you have some info, I welcome your comments. Please comment um, and thank you in advance for doing that. Also, if you're looking for some other content, I have a few other videos featuring my Blackmagic rig, some footage reels of some landscape stuff, some other, other projects that I've done with it so far in the last month. Uh, so check those out. I'll, I'll link to those up here. So today we're looking at the low light performance of the Blackmagic Pocket 6K camera with the dual native ISO brackets, uh, whatever you want to call them. So when you're shooting with your black magic, you basically have two, well, you te technically you have like three brackets. There's the 100 I ISO 100 to 1000 range, there's the 1200 to 6400 range, and then there's anything above 6400, which I'll make a note, you cannot change anything if you're shooting above 6400 you cannot go in and change that b raw file in premiere or in davinci you're stuck with whatever you're shooting at anything higher than 6400 just make a note of that so that if you're planning to change that in post that you're not going to be able to the reason i say there's two those two bracket three brackets um, is because going from iso to 100 to a thousand um, in Blackmagic RAW, in post-production, that is your range for altering your RAW clip internally without losing any, any picture quality. Um, basically, they give you two brackets. It's the 100 to 1000, and in your Blackmagic RAW file in post, you can go anywhere in that range, or if you shoot 1250 to 6400, that is your second range, and you can ch change it to anywhere within that spectrum. So you can't go lower than 1250 if you're shooting at 1250. And likewise, can't go above 1000. So let's take a look at our clips, um, starting with ISO 100. So we're gonna start off at ISO 100. Um, I have my settings at T5.8. I'm shooting in 24 frames and shutter speed of 50. So we're inside the, the 100 to 1000 ISO bracket now and we're going to jump up to the higher one. So basically what I did with this first clip you'll see I shot at ISO 100 in post I raised it to 250 and then I shot another clip at 1000 and, and lowered it to 250 just to see if there was any difference in the image quality. I thought there might be but nope it's it's true raw it records um, the image into the raw file basically your ISO is just for your viewing because of course you can change it later. Another note I will make on that, you'll, you'll notice here in this screenshot that as I'm scrolling, as I'm scrubbing my, my clip, you'll see the, the ISO change because I was changing it in real time while recording. So you'll see the image, the exposure changing as I'm changing the ISO. That won't print to your video file. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna open up the Blackmagic RAW controls in Premiere or in DaVinci, and you're gonna set it, instead of camera metadata, you're gonna set it to clip mode so that you can set all the, all the parameters, all your, your black levels, your white levels, your contrast, um, your midpoints, you're gonna set it to clip mode, and then it'll remain constant throughout the clip, even if during recording you had changed it. If you stay on camera metadata, it will actually embed 
the changes that you made with the ISO as you were shooting. Something that I noticed uh, as I was editing, and I've, I've come across this several times in Premiere, I'll go in and I'll change my clip settings, I'll set it to clip, I'll change my settings, you know, get, get my color correction, my gamma correction, how I want it, and somehow when I drop that clip in again into the same sequence or a different sequence, I lose all ability to control or manipulate that footage. For some reason I cannot figure it out. What I end up doing is deleting that file from the project and re-importing it and then manipulating it again. So this is a, a problem in Premiere I think that I just don't know how to get around. If you have any insight on this problem please let me know. I'd really like to know why it's doing this and how I can revert to my original clip inside of Premiere without having to delete a clip and re-import it, wasting all that time. Not that it's a lot of time, but if you have to do that several times, it's, it adds up. So, please send me your comments if you know what's going on there. Just something I noticed uh, that's really kind of inconvenient. Now we're going to take a look at the clips that I shot at each step of ISO, starting we did, the, we did the 100 test, we did the 1000 test, now we're gonna go to 1250. And you're gonna see this clip, and you'll see the detail and the noise. We're starting to get some noise at 1250. Now we're gonna move on to 2500. And again, we can change our 1250 clip to 2500 if we want in post, but I decided I'm just gonna print the image at 2500 and see what we get. So here's at 2500, you'll see you start to get more noise, more deterioration of the image and sharpness. Next we're going up to 10,000. So now this is outside of the bracket of controllable Blackmagic RAW parameters inside Premiere or DaVinci, wherever you're changing your, your Blackmagic RAW files. This is outside of the 6400 range, so it's going to print this ISO onto your clip. So now we're getting a lot more noise. You'll see in the wide shot that it's, it's actually, it's tolerable. I could, I could deal with that, you know, it almost looks like some natural film grain and I can throw something like Film Convert on it and it'll probably look pretty good. So I'd be comfortable shooting with ISO, I would be comfortable shooting at ISO 10,000. This clip is definitely usable. And lastly, we're gonna bump it up to 25,600. <laughs> the highest this camera goes is actually 25,600. ISO. I'm guessing this is going to be really grainy. We'll check it out in Premiere, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be grainy because I can see it on this little monitor. So This is the maximum ISO that the Blackmagic Pocket 6K can record at, and very similar to the 10th, I mean it's definitely noisy, you'll see on the right side it's definitely more noisy, more degradation of the image quality, and of course you can't recover any of the ISO, but again this is usable. I think uh, if I were to throw a film grain on it, I think I would actually be happy using 25,000, uh, ISO 25,000 if I needed it. Um, I'm going to actually really try it out up in Wyoming in a few weeks. Stay tuned for that video. We're gonna get some awesome footage from Wyoming, probably from the, the Tetons and, and the National Forest around. So stay tuned for that episode. But this has been like a basic test for sure. And I should have actually adjusted my aperture and made all the images a uh, similar exposure so that you can actually see a real use of the clip. But I just decided to print it and, and leave my aperture at the same. So you're kind of just seeing what it can do, how it can amplify, and I'm pretty happy with what it's done. And I would definitely use some of this higher ISO footage. I'm going to show you my process really quickly of how I kind of color correct my Blackmagic RAW footage and get it to the point where I'm ready to grade it. So the first thing is I'm going to go for my exposure and, and adjust my ISO as necessary, get the exposure probably a few steps overexposed. Uh, that way I can mess with my whites and my blacks more accurately in my midpoint. So usually I start with my midpoint and I bring it down a few tenths and then I'll bump down my blacks as well give it some nice contrast I, I'll sometimes I'll mess with the contrast itself but usually adjusting the blacks and the whites is fine also I like to shoot warm so I almost almost always bump up my white balance and then I also add some saturation so you'll notice this this stuff really grades pretty well compared to 
say, Sony log footage that I, I, I've had difficulties grading Sony log. This, this is pretty easy and I'm ready to put a color grade over this that I'm happy with. And usually I, I like to use film convert a lot, so I'll throw some film convert on this and show you a cool film look for this Blackmagic RAW footage. That's basically all I do to get my footage ready. And then I'll load it, you know, edit my sequence, add film convert over top, usually on a nested sequence. And I'm really happy with how it looks, especially for, for outdoor stuff and, and for interview stuff. I really like the way film convert adds that nice film grain and film stock that looks natural. So that's basically my process for Blackmagic RAW. Um, low light test, I'm gonna do some more testing. I'll do some, hopefully get to do some, some star shots and some time lapse because the Blackmagic RAW actually has a time lapse feature that we're gonna try out and show you that in a couple of weeks. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy this channel and watch my other videos on the Blackmagic 6K camera and stay tuned because we're gonna have a lot more stuff coming out from this camera and we're gonna go on some really cool adventures coming up very soon.